So you've been thinking about accumulating the area underneath this function f of t from 1 to x to create a function we're calling g of x. Now, in this video, we're going to use Desmos to actually build, little by little, that function more precisely than you may have with paper and pencil. Now, as I do this, I want you to be aware of something. This function has as the output, as the vertical axis, the function f of t, and as the input, the function t. But for instructive purposes, we're going to, in our brain, think we're now going to input a variable x and output g of x. So imagine you're going to create this other function g of x and kind of superimpose it on top of this just so that you can see both and that you can be thinking the way you should be thinking about this. So just as a quick reminder, we are going to be creating the function g of x whose job it is <laughs> to accumulate and keep track of the area underneath this blue f of t curve between 1 and whatever input you want. Now you saw previously that if we input 0 for x, so imagine the integral from 1 to 0, you saw how that was going to produce a negative quantity. And I want you to see that. Here it comes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> And I think we saw that there, the area of that rectangle here had an area of one half because it's a one by one half for the, for the area of the, of the tr sorry triangle. It's a one by one, and the area of that triangle would therefore be a half. And so negative a half because we've flipped the order. Instead of f of b minus f of a, we're doing f of a minus f of b, so we get the negative result. And so as expected, if we input a 0 for x, we're going to output a negative 1 half for g of x. Now, as we move, so imagine the area, instead of from 1 to 0, we go 1 to a half, 1 to 3 quarters, 1 to, and eventually 1 to 1. The area accumulated between 1 and 1, the integral from 1 to 1 would be 0. And you're going to see that right there. So as expected, the accumulated area between 1 and 1 would now be 0. Then as x increases from 1 to, as we keep going, we're going to start to accumulate this positive area here. So now imagine just x is increasing in little infinitesimal bits. And so as x increases by little infinitesimal bits, the amount of area that we um, accumulate is going to increase. But it's going to increase by less and less and less. Because the function is decreasing, the amount of area we accumulate initially just to the right of 1 compared to the amount of area we accumulate out here is going to be much less. So while we're accumulating positive area, we're going to be accumulating it at a decreasing rate. Do you see that? We're increasing, the function is increasing, we're accumulating more and more area, but we're accumulating it at a lesser and lesser rate until, boom, what's happening at x equals 2? If we input a 2, all right, so the amount of area ac accumulated from, say, 1 till here, we have this triangle. Then when we get to 2, we have this triangle. So the area of this triangle and the area of this triangle are the same, but as mentioned, when area is on the positive side of the vertical scale, we call that positive area, and when area is on the below that horizontal axis, on the negative side of the vertical scale, we call that area negative. Not in a weird way, just in a directional way. Above is positive, below is negative. And so this triangle here would be thought of as having negative area. This triangle here would be thought of as having positive area. But in terms of the magnitude of those areas, they'd be the same. So the positive and the negative counteract to make zero. 
Then after that, the accumulation of area is all negative. All this stuff over here is below. It's on the negative side of that vertical scale. We then designate it as negative area. So we're going to be accumulating as x increases from 2 to 4. We're going to be accumulating more and more and more and more and more and more negative area. Now notice how the concavity changes here though. As x increases from here to here, we're just accumulating more and more and more negative area faster and faster and faster. Thus, we have this concave down, decreasing concave down situation. But then once we reach this tip here, then we're still accumulating as x increases, we're still accumulating negative area, but we're accumulating it less quickly. So imagine in here, the area in this little bit compared to the area in this little bit. So we see that the, uh, the accumulated negative area, so the g of x function is still getting more and more negative, but at a lesser and lesser rate, thus concave up. So I hope you can make sense of the accumulated areas and how they're negative and positive, how we can even get zero, how we can decrease concave down, we can decrease concave up, etc. Now what happens once x reaches 4? When x reaches 4, we've accumulated all the negative area that we're ever going to, uh, going to accumulate in this case. So notice we have in g of x a minimum amount of accumulated area. And from there, we're going to now accumulate positive area. Now it's going to accumulate just a little bit, but then more, 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 more. Up until this peak here, we're going to accumulate the most positive area we're going to accumulate. Now here's the question. The area on the positive side here in this triangle, is the area, positively speaking, that we're going to accumulate going to counteract all the negative area we'd accumulated here? I don't think so. It looks to me as though this area is greater than this area. And so it would seem to me that while we are going to see an increasing trend, we will not see the g of x function get back to zero or even go positive, at least not before this peak here. Let's see. So we see the function increase, and as predicted, right about there. As predicted, we have this increasing, accumulating positive area to this point. Now we're going to continue to increase. We still have positive area, but the amount of area here is greater than here, is greater than here, and in here we're just accumulating little bits of positive area. And again, are we going to accumulate as much negative area that we had accumulated before? I don't think so. It looks to me as though we're going to come just short of reaching zero for g of x and then I don't know if you can see but here is that little blue um, horizontal constant function so no more area to accumulate and so the g of x function just goes constant there in red so what you're looking there at there is the function g of x in the multicolors there kind of to show the different segments and what I want you to think about, maybe go back and rehearse this in your own thinking, is why, why does the function start at negative one half? Why does the g of x function increase to zero? Why does it increase at concave up? Why does it increase concave down? Why does the g of x function decrease? Why is it zero when x equals two? Why does it decrease concave down and then decrease concave up? Why does it reach a minimum here? Why does the function increase concave up? Why does the function increase concave down? And then why does this g of x function just remain constant out here? Why doesn't this function move above the horizontal axis? These are all questions that you should be thinking about as you examine this function g of x. But here's the, the big thing. Your brain has to practice thinking about functions whose job it is to accumulate area underneath another function's curve, the integral function. Hope this helps.